guys, my name is Igor Brayman. I'm currently a culinary student at the Art Institute of San Francisco. And today we're going to be preparing some roasted corn pot stickers. So we're going to be making a pot sticker dough, which is also known as gyoza, a gyoza dough. And it's really one of the simplest doughs you can make in a kitchen. Plain bleached white flour and boiling hot water along with a pinch of salt. Maybe about a half teaspoon of salt. Something I want to urge all you home cooks to start doing is keeping your salt in a container like this, where you can actually reach in and grab it. Once you start being able to measure with your fingers, everything becomes much easier. So in here I have one cup of flour. I'm going to take approximately about one quarter to one third of a cup of boiling water. Why do I not have a set amount? Because you don't know how wet your flour already is. Flour absorbs the moisture in the air that's in the room. Therefore, we're trying to hydrate it and create a dough. So I'm going to put in this about third a cup of water, and then start stirring. Since the water is hot, it's going to cook the flour. As you can see, it's coming together into a very dough-like, pasty form. If it's too wet, you can always add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry, add a little water. And you're going to keep kneading this. And I have one already made right here. And it comes out into a very thick, like dough, which we're going to be able to play with, mold into pot sticker shapes and whatnot. Right now we're creating the filling for the pot stickers. Now usually you'd have a filling of maybe some seafood, some pork, really anything you want, and a bunch of aromatics like ginger, garlic, onion. But this time we're going to go a little bit more American and add in some roasted corn to give it this really nice toasty flavor. Now right here I actually have some corn already roasted off, but I'm going to show you how to do this yourself. So corn, it's a lot cheaper to buy it in the husk. That's about 25 cents each corn in comparison to buying maybe three of these peeled for a good six dollars or so. So I'm going to just take the husks right off of this. The silks also, the silks are the little threads that hang off the corn. Break it all off. And now you're going to want a wider bowl, like the one I have here. And you're going to put the corn in it with your knife. You're actually going to scrape each and every kernel off the cob. Just go straight down and it'll fall right into your bowl. To make the roasted corn, not, not that hard of a process. You can do it in the oven, on the stove top. I'm going to do it on the stove top. I have a small pot right here, tiny bit of corn oil to keep with the corn flavor. I have this pot on the highest heat possible because I want it to be super nice and crispy. Right here I'm going to take our peeled corn, broken up a little bit, and pop it right into the hot oil. Now if you ever put anything into oil and you don't hear it sizzle, you're doing something wrong. It means your oil has to be a little hot. Now this, you're going to get every kernel covered in oil and just let it sit for maybe about two, three minutes. When the bottom gets nice, roasted and golden, stir it up once more. Wait another minute or so, stir it up again until every single kernel gets this sort of coated of golden brown, which I have right here. So now that we got our roasted corn done for the filling, we can really just assemble the filling, which is a bunch of different components put together. As the base, I have pork. This is pork loin, which I just took myself and just chopped it up with a knife, really roughly. You can throw it in the food processor if you want, or buy already ground pork, already ground beef, chicken, shrimp, whatever you want. I'm going to throw all this into my bowl. Right here, I would say this is maybe a cup and a half, maybe half a pound of pork. And then with this, we have our half cup of roasted corn, which is one corn cob. So once we have our pork and our corn in there, then we have a quarter of a yellow onion, diced. One stick of celery. And now we get into our aromatics, which I want to have a little conversation about those. Aromatics are things in the kitchen that have intense, pungent flavors and smells, which are some of the things that I'm going to use here. For example, I have garlic, and this is some pickled jalapeno, because I didn't have fresh, but at the same time pickled, has that same great taste. Those are both going to go in. Now ginger. Ginger is a root, a tuber. A lot of people are intimidated by it. It has such a great flavor, but how do you get into this? Of course you can peel it with a peeler, but I'm going to show you a secret, which I learned in school. You take a spoon, and this little knob of ginger right here is going to do whatever I tell it to. Watch this. With the spoon, I can just peel the skin right off and it just comes right off. No problem at all. 
Do I have any scientific evidence to back this up? Nope. Spoon just works with ginger the best. Once I peeled about half of it, I'm gonna cut the half I need off. Finish peeling it right here. Get my board clean. And then just mince it up. You know, oddly enough, ginger has so many mysterious nutritional values that I can't go too in depth in them, but I know in a lot of Asian cultures, ginger has this extreme medicinal value along with a lot of other roots that they grow. That it's put in teas, it's brewed into different tinctures, different pills, and it gives sort of this energized feeling and balances your mind. So next I'm gonna do, I like to always have a little green. Some people put cilantro into their mixes. I actually have fresh mint from my backyard. It's the season, why not? And this is my little herb mixture where I have crushed red pepper, black pepper, cumin, and a little bit of cinnamon. Now why do I have so many flavors going on here? I have spicy, I have bitter, I have sweet, I have savory, I have salty. Well, the goal of Asian cooking all the time is to balance all those five flavors. If you get a complete flavor in your mouth using each of those components, then you've created a great Asian dish. Then I'm gonna put in one egg, this is a small egg, just to bind all the ingredients together. And finally, I'm gonna season, season it all up with my Asian liquids. Here I have a little bit of sesame oil, toasted. I just want about a half teaspoon, not much some rice wine vinegar, unseasoned. If you buy it seasoned, you just wasted a lot of money on salt and sugar and water, which are much cheaper if you were to season it at home. This may be just about another tablespoon. Soy sauce. So I just put in about a tablespoon of soy sauce. I usually use low sodium, because higher sodium means there's just more salt in here. I want that soy flavor and I can always control the salt content myself. And finally, I have fish sauce, a Vietnamese fish sauce. Buy it in a glass bottle. That means you're getting the real thing. If you buy the plastic bottle one, it's probably an Americanized version. Only about a tablespoon. Fish sauce smells and tastes disgusting, but once it's cooked, it adds this great savory flavor. And I'm gonna just take all these and mix them together. So now we're gonna start actually filling our pot stickers and I'll show you how to cook them. I first gotta give a shout out to some people that gave me this as a birthday present a while ago, Sarah and Rebecca Scanlon, thank you very much. I had a French one of these that was made out of wood, but I misplaced it. So pink for the day, because real men can cook with pink. So what we do to make our dough, we're going to put a little flour on our table, or work surface, if you have a cutting board, that's fine. I'm going to take the dough we've already had done. Now if you're going to make little individual ones like you would with your kids, you're going to take a little ball of it. This might actually even be too big. We'll say about a tablespoon sized ball. Think about a walnut. Flatten it down. Make sure each side is floured. And then begin rolling it out. I usually go towards me and flip. Towards me and flip. Start, you're probably going to cut out your dough and make sure it's a perfect circle. But since we're doing this at home, it's more fun to just have rustic shapes. So this is perfect. Now one thing that I was thinking I have a lot of dough. Doing a lot of little ones might take some time, so I think it's time to do one giant pot sticker today. See how the dough is actually springing back a little bit? That means the gluten within the flour, which is sort of the web that it forms, it's getting a little tired and a little tight. So sometimes if you let your dough rest, that'll stop happening. But I think I've got it to a pretty good size where I won't have to let it rest. Like that. That's perfect for a giant pot sticker. Now let me show you how to fill them and roll them real quick. Get some of the excess flour off. For the small one, we'll do maybe about two teaspoons of fill, about that much, right into the center. Now, you see how it's falling apart, the filling a little bit, not completely stuck together? Once the egg cooks in that, it'll stick together and be as one. So this, then you're gonna bring both sides together, 
And if it's too dry, you might want to use a little water to the seam, but I'm not going to do that. Now at this point, you have to create pleats, which is the fun part for your kids, because I'm not good at them at all. But you basically keep folding, and then you press them all in, and you get a pot sticker like shape. That is a terrible one. Maybe my big one will look better. <laughs> The problem is going to be getting all the filling cooked, so I'm going to make it a little bit flatter. That just looks like a nice giant pot sticker size. Bring the two ends together. See if we can make this one a lot prettier. Now we're going to cook our pot stickers off, but I'm not going to do them in a pot. <laughs> pot stickers are actually traditionally done in a pan. Weird how they're called pot stickers. I guess it's more old school Chinese technique. So I'm going to get a little bit of oil in my skillet. Not that much. I want a much wider skillet than I would for anything else. As that heats up, I'm going to get my pot stickers. And in they go. Hear that sizzle? See that sizzle? You, once you put them down in the pan, you want to not move them. If you move them, you won't get that sort of pretty brown underside that a traditional pot sticker would have. And then space for a large one. Oil is already smoking off some of the sides, so I'm going to turn it down. Because we really want the undersides to get brown without burning. I right, we've already got some nice brown. So we want to just let it keep browning without burning. So we've let our pot sticker sit on the hot pan for maybe about a minute and a half or so. Let me show you the underside of one of them. Here's a much lighter one, still acceptable. And here's a perfect one. Just like that. And what we do, now it's finish the pot stickers because our underside is pretty crispy, pretty cooked. But nothing else is. So we're going to put the heat back up to really high. And this is what you got to be careful with. Whatever water and oil touch, you get a big, bubbly, hot mess. So we're going to put in some water and make the pot sticker steam, but cover it right when we put that water in so we don't get hurt at all. So the oil's hot enough, we're going to put in about a quarter cup. Turn it back on low and let those steam. The steam is going to cook the outside of the pot sticker as well as the inside slowly. Keep it very juicy on the inside, but the bottom will still keep it nice and crispy. So our pot stickers have been going for about 5-10 minutes now, and I could see under the lid that almost all the water is evaporated. That's how I know they're done. So I'm going to take it off, and they are looking beautiful. Our large one might not be done just because he's a bit larger, but our smaller ones are perfect. Let's have a look. Perfectly dark on the bottom, but nice, noodly and soft on the top. I'm going to put them on a paper towel just to drain the small amount of oil that's in there. Now with these, you can also remember, the filling doesn't have to be exactly like the one that I've made. If you're vegetarian or vegan, you can easily make a filling out of any kind of tofu, soybeans, carrots, cabbage is traditional, plums even, apricots, do fruit fillings, try to do candy bar fillings maybe even. Um, you could do a very hearty cheeseburger filling, cheeseburger and onions, anything your family really likes. Can go right inside of these. Now let's check if our big one is done. Our big one needs a little bit more time, so I'm gonna kick the heat up a little bit, put in another eighth cup of water, and continue. So I finally got our giant pot sticker off with our small ones, and I want to show you guys the underside. That is what a nice pot sticker should look like. So I'm gonna plate these. I have two plates set up, one for the large one and one for the smaller ones. And as the bottom garnish, I just have a little bit of mixed greens and some spicy sprouts. Give everyone sort of a little A presentation and B a little bit of a side salad to serve with. And I made a quick dressing to dip in, which was a quarter cup of rice wine vinegar, quarter cup of soy sauce, 
eighth a cup of water, tablespoon of sugar, and then I just have some sesame seeds and red chili flakes floating in it. That's what will give it that sort of extra kick. Let's slice into it and see how it looks on the inside. Oh, look at that filling. Perfect. It's beautifully done and delicious. Let's slice one of the smaller ones up. You folks like the track?